Hey guys, what's happening? Chris here. In today's video, I'm going to try something different that I think you're gonna like. My favorite YouTuber, Game Makers Toolkit, just released a video about how to become a game designer. And I thought it would be fun and interesting for me to react to that video and see what his thoughts are compared to mine. So let's dive in. If there's one question I get asked more than anything else, it's this. How do I become a game designer? I also get this question a lot. This is by far the question that most people want to know about, especially when they're in school. Starting with the most important question of all, what does a game designer actually do? The answer to this question is going to depend entirely on the size of the studio, the type of games they make, and the structure of their teams. I completely agree with this, and I will also say that it is very difficult to know what a game designer really does, because at every studio it is different, and not only because of the studio size. In some studios, game designers are actually required to know game programming, like at Naughty Dog. On the other hand, there are others in which you're going to need a specific skill. Because depending on where you work, the design role might be a very general position or an extremely specialized one. For example, in the past, I have seen roles like collision designers in which you need to be really good at 3D modeling in order to get that job. And there might be also jobs that only exist in a specific studio. Level designers might be split into quest designers and open world designers. You might have narrative, UX, economy, and technical designers who are a bridge between design and code. On Red Dead Redemption 2, there were people who focused exclusively on designing systems for the horse. In huge studios, like the example he gave about Red Dead Redemption horses, there may be people just working on scripting animals, their movement, and their patterns. Another important here to distinguish here from AAA to indie games is that if you work on an indie studio, you're probably going to do a lot more than just design. Sometimes it might be art, sometimes it might be programming, and even sometimes it might be QA. So take that into consideration. Well, if we look at game designers, their job is to come up with ideas for mechanics and systems. If those are approved by the creative leads, the designers will create detailed design docs and asset lists to help programmers and artists turn those ideas into reality. I think this also varies from studio to studio. Personally, in the studio that I worked at, we don't really use a lot of design documentation because most people, to be honest, don't read them. I also think that if you're documenting a feature, you need to try to be as concise and short as possible so that you don't waste your time and the other developers' time. Once those features exist, designers will be given tools to manipulate the mechanic further, perhaps a simple scripting language to plan out interactions or a spreadsheet of stats to change. I actually prefer to create prototypes in Unity or other game engine in order to share an idea. Because I think that anyone can have an idea, but in order to know if it is good, you need to actually play it. On most big games, levels are made in grey box. Simple, untextured geometry that will be dressed up by artists. This is why level designers use grey boxing in their levels. This gives them the ability to model levels fast and as efficiently as possible. So that when iteration comes, they can change things without any issue at all. Both roles are highly collaborative because designers will be working closely with artists, animators, programmers, writers and others to turn their ideas into something pretty and playable. It also saves a lot of time by not having the artist texture something that it is not going to make it into the game. How do you become a designer? It's the million dollar question, and from speaking with my industry experts, I reckon you really need four things to get a job as a designer. You need to be able to think in terms of design. You need soft or interpersonal skills like communication. You'll need a strong portfolio. I completely agree with the requirements that he listed. However, I will also add that most game studios, especially the bigger ones, tend to ask for a shit game as a requirement. To show what you can do, and for a lot of roles, you'll need some level of experience in the games industry. Then you find yourself in the dilemma of the chicken and the egg situation. That is why I think it's a good idea to actually start in a smaller studio to get the experience that you need and then jump from there. Of course, this doesn't mean that you can lock out and land your dream job. However, for most people, they tend to start as smaller studios and then move to their dream job. If there's one piece of advice I got from pretty much everyone I talk to, it's this. Make stuff. 
Show people that you have the ability to design a game or level and then put that together in a portfolio. I think that portfolios are the most important part of a game designer's application, and I always say that. In order to have a good portfolio, the first step you can take is to familiarize yourself with any game engine, it can be Unity, Unreal, or any other, and just start prototyping games. Then, once you know how the game engine actually works, you can team up with people and participate in game jams. This is also really good because that gives you the experience of actually working with other people. For example, this is Persis, a super short game with fully destructible environments, which helped Zachary Priest land a job on Watch Dogs Legion. So, if you want to be a game designer, your portfolio should include small projects like this that show your ability to come up with an interesting mechanic or system. If you end up getting an interview for a game design position, I would advise for you to prepare a special demo just for that interview. Keep this as your ace and show it to them during the interview. This is what I did when I landed my job, and it works really well because no one expects it, and it shows that you care about the company and their culture. It also shows them what you can actually do. Because they'd made a level for the firm's previous game. Whatever's on your portfolio, make sure your stuff is finished, even if it's incredibly short. Try to focus on your best work and always pick quality over quantity. And while downloads and documentations are great, employers can't play and read everything, so pack your portfolio with videos and screenshots. Another tip that is also really helpful is to always put your best portfolio piece first because hiring managers don't really have a lot of time to look at portfolios. So the first impression they get from you is going to be really important. Now, let's talk about experience. While some studios will absolutely have entry-level positions for design, they're uncommon and highly sought after. One way to get this is through placements like internships, trainee positions, and work experience posts, which can absolutely turn into full-time roles at the company if you do well. I think this is a very hard topic, because having the experience not always leads to a job. I did an internship when I was studying, and I worked on a noteworthy game. However, that didn't help me a lot when I was applying to jobs. What helps the most, I think, is to start at a small studio or do some volunteer work. I volunteered for a company that created games for kids, and that really showed my passion for employers that were actually interested in hiring me. Also, you need to participate in as many game jams as possible, go to conferences, volunteer at them, etc. Because that might help you to network with industry people. The more things you do at these events, the better chances you have at getting hired. Another common approach is to start in Quality Assurance, or QA, or game testing. This gives you experience in the biz and a first-hand look at how studios operate. In terms of the QA route, I'm not gonna lie, it is a bit tricky. QA is a very hard and taxing job. You essentially have to play the same game over and over again, trying to find bugs. And while I've seen some people transfer successfully from QA to game design, sometimes it just doesn't happen because QA most of the time goes unnoticed. What I would recommend in this situation is essentially to do your QA job during the day and then put some extra hours to talk to the game design managers and see if you can get some design tasks assigned to you. A lot of game studios have some tasks that not even designers want to do. And that's a great opportunity for you to just jump in and help. And this might lead you to a job in the future. Now there's one pretty stellar way to get both a portfolio and experience, and that's university or college. In 2021, there's a huge number of courses for game design all around the world, like DigiPen in Washington, Teesside University in the UK, Breda University in the Netherlands, and RMIT in Australia. In the game industry, degrees really don't matter. I did take this route because I was coming from another country, and I needed a way to get into the US. But I think that if I had been born here, I would have just created games and prototypes on my own without actually going to college. You'll also get to meet friends to build games with, and you'll make connections in the industry, and you'll often get access to work experience posts and graduate positions. This is a strong and increasingly popular route into the industry, but almost everyone I spoke to, including the lecturers themselves, warned that the college diploma itself isn't the important bit. The issue with college is that it is super expensive, and while it can give you certain skills and some connections, 
It's actually up to you to make it worth it. I know a lot of people who graduated with me and they didn't find a job in the game industry. Another issue is that while the university might have connections, they're not going to place you at any studio. At least not in my experience. If you do decide to study game design, make sure you research the school carefully. Look at who is teaching and their credentials and experience. Look at which studios the university has good connections with and where graduates have ended up. And definitely look out for predatory, for-profit colleges in the US. Always do your research before you enroll. I think college is a valuable life experience and it can help you develop some skills. But it is up to you to carve your own path. Whatever you do, make sure to work on your portfolio in your spare time and set some deadlines for yourself. It's worth mentioning that other skills and educational backgrounds can help you stand out as a candidate. Definitely knowing programming or economics or even finance is going to help you a lot to distinguish yourself from other candidates who are applying to the job. I know programming and 3D modeling, so I can work by myself on a prototype, and that is a skill that is very valuable to hiring managers. And finally, we can't discount the social side of things. The classic, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Making strong connections in the industry through networking events and social media can open up doors that others can't even see. To be honest, the social aspect hasn't worked for me very well. I got a lot of connections at school and they didn't help me a lot. I got introduced to a lot of people from different studios, but I just couldn't land a job from that. Maybe it is that I am an introvert and I tend to have a hard time developing relationships with people. This obviously can work because I've seen people do it. However, I wouldn't put too much emphasis in it. Because at the end of the day, I think it's actually up to you and your skill set to actually find a job in the game industry. So how do you ace a design interview? When you're interviewing for a design position, employers are really looking for those two skills I mentioned earlier, design thinking and interpersonal skills. Talking about interviews is a little bit hard because they're different at every studio, so there aren't a lot of tips that I can give you here. But at most studios, they're going to be interested in how you think regarding game mechanics, especially in a game that the company has worked on. So make sure that you play their games before actually going to the interview. I've heard more than one studio ask candidates what would happen if you remove one of the options in rock, paper, scissors to see how they'd work through the problem and show that they understand game balance. They might also ask questions like what would you add or subtract from a specific game and how would that affect it? And obviously you're going to have to be prepared for the classic questions of what was a conflict that you were involved in and how did you react to it and how you solved it. Those questions are meant to see how you perform in a team environment and if you will fill the team or not. If you nail the interview, you may be given a design test. This is where you're asked to prove your design skills, usually on paper, but perhaps in a scripting tool or level design tool. I don't really like game design tests, and it is a shame that some studios won't even interview you if you don't pass the test. Regardless, you have to do them, and not only are they not easy, but they're also very time consuming. So whenever you have one, make sure to plan for it and give it your best shot in order to be successful. I think that game studios should really consider the person before the skills, because you can actually develop skills, but not really the person. Unfortunately, game studios don't have the time to train people. So most of them are gonna want to see skills. And so the question to ask is, is game design a dream job? If you follow gaming news at all, you'll definitely have seen some headlines that might put you off the games industry for good. Working in game development can involve crunch. In my opinion, it is the best job that a person could ever have if you really like game design. I know the game industry has a lot of problems, but it is the same in all other industries. Every industry is going to have the good and bad, and the game industry is actively working on solving its issues like crunching. These days, we're seeing more companies take a step to make things better for people. And there are even stories about sexual harassment in the workplace. And it's certainly true. Game development is volatile, extremely hard work, often thankless, and not as diverse or as inclusive or as safe as it needs to be. They are addressing the issues of racial and gender underrepresentation, with companies making sure that people from all backgrounds get hired. And while game design is hard and there are a lot of issues in the industry, I think it's still one of the most rewarding jobs ever. Especially when you ship a game and you see people playing it and having fun. 
You can also protect yourself to some extent by carefully researching studios before taking a job to see how you'll be treated. Look to sites like Glassdoor and talk to former or existing employees. Another challenge for game development is that you may not have opportunities where you live. There are few game developers and even fewer game design courses in places like India and South America, for example. So this is exactly the problem that I had. I come from Mexico, so it was very difficult to find a job there because there's no game industry at all back when I was studying. I couldn't even study game design there because it didn't exist. So that is the reason why I came to the US to achieve my dream of becoming a game designer. You may need to move around to get the best jobs, but you could potentially get experience in small studios where you currently live. However, as time goes by, I think a lot of studios are opening up in places where there weren't any before. In Mexico, for example, there's this studio called Lienzo, and they are creating amazing experiences. So definitely the game industry is growing a lot in different parts of the world as it's getting more accepted. But then again, it's worth remembering that you don't need to work at Ubisoft or Rockstar to be a game designer. The thousands of indie games released every year are proof that individuals, tiny teams, and small companies can put together games without industry involvement. That's not to say that this route is any easier than getting hired, and it's not a guarantee of making a living wage, let alone becoming a millionaire. But maybe this is how you want to be a game designer. Completely agree with this point. Becoming an indie game designer is probably even harder than becoming a game designer in the AAA space. Not only do you need skills like programming, modeling, animation, or others, but it is also really tough to stand out. However, this doesn't mean that it is impossible. If you have the passion and drive for it, I think it's a very fulfilling job. Because you can have total creative control of your own game and also set your deadlines however you want. And that's it you guys, thank you so much for watching. What do you think of this format of video? Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. See you next time.